All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Planetary Diversity mod, which was originally made by forum user Thomas P. It's now been adopted by Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun new tool that allows you to tweak otherwise static elements in the in-game solar system. And what I mean by that is whenever you do go to create a new save file, it will actually take the standard solar system and sort of mix it up a bit to create a unique new solar system for you to play in. Now, though, I have to admit it's not entirely unique, you are still going to be dealing with the same general planets in typically the same order. It's just going to change up certain aspects of them, such as planetary orbits, atmospheric pressure, etc. And I gotta say, even though it's still a lot of the same stuff after years of playing with the same in-game solar system, even minor tweaks add a whole new element that is very much welcome, which I love. So let's have a look at what all we do get here and how it works. So you may have already noticed here in the Start New Game UI that we have quite a few more options to play around with. And probably the most important here is this one, the Planetary Diversity Game Seed. And this button here basically determines if the mod functions or not. With this on, it will create that new unique solar system, and with it off, it will create the same old Kerbal solar system we always had. So let's just leave it on there. Now next to it though is a text box where you can enter a seed. And basically what we have here is whenever we do create a solar system with this mod, inside its persistent SFS file in its save folder, there will be a seed number near the top which is a nine digit number which basically determines how the solar system gets created. And now if you leave this text box blank, it'll create a random seed and a random new solar system. But if you have the seed from that SFS file from a previously created solar system, you can pop it in here and boom, you can recreate it in a new save file, which is pretty handy to have. And of course, if you know the number, you can even share it with friends. Now, the rest of the options we have here are what different objects or, well, basically what tweaks the mod will make to the solar system. And the first one here is the change planetary orbits. And this will, of course, well, change the orbits of the planets. Now, due to the randomized nature of the mod, sometimes it may only be a small change. Other times it could be a drastic change. But still, again, you're still going to be dealing with the same basic structure of the solar system. Just the planets are going to be in slightly different locales, which still could mean a a lot to your gameplay as it could mean more or less delta v to get to your target. Now the next option we have is to change the gas giant colors. And well it's simple to explain, it'll change the color of gas giants. The next is change atmospheric pressure, which will tweak any existing atmospheres, giving it more or less pressure, which could drastically change how you design landers to go there. And next is probably the most drastic change that this mod will do. It can add or remove atmospheres. And that... Oh boy, is awesome. Oh, I really love that. You could have atmospheres on planets you never had before and vice versa. And it is a pretty cool thing. Now, again, it is randomized though. So out of the six different save files I've created with this mod, I've actually only had two of those save files actually add new atmospheres, only one that removed an atmosphere. So it is a bit hit or miss. Again, it is all random. And the final option we have is the Change Celestial Body Names, where it will give all of the planets and moons, well, new names, which is kind of cool. Not the biggest change, but hey, it's fun just to have different names. Now, my favorite part about all this is that if you do have any Copernicus planet packs installed, 
this should also change them too. Now, if those planets are static planetary objects, basically meaning if that planet you added into the game has a set texture rather than a procedural texture, it's not gonna work. But if it's a procedurally made planet, as a lot of the planet packs out there that I've encountered at least have been, these will edit them too, and I love that. So the more planets you have in the game, the more it's all gonna get wonky, and that is just wonderful. Now on to the slight downside though. Now I'm actually gonna put some video up here real quick of one of the planet or one of the solar systems I created earlier. And uh, I'm gonna drastically speed it up because, well, it takes a very long time for you to create a new solar system. And that's because it's having to actually, well, create these things and then build a new scaled space file for every planet and moon that it has now adjusted. And what those scaled space files are is an object that the game uses basically to view planets from far away. They're effectively low-res images for when you're really, really far away from a planet, but you still want it to show there. And this mod is actually having to recreate all of those because, yeah, the planets are in new locations with potentially new colors and atmospheres, and so it can take some time. Out of the six save files I did create, it averaged out to about 15 minutes per creation. So yeah, and that's going to take longer the more planets you have. So if you do have a lot of other Copernicus planet, uh, planet packs installed, it's going to take a really long time. But of course, once it's done, it's done. And you can play the game normal as much as you want, and you'll probably get dozens of hours out of it. So a mere 15 minutes isn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. So let's actually cancel out of here and resume the save file I made earlier, the sixth of the uh, saves that I did create. And uh, as you'll notice when we jump in here, we are getting a UI element and it's loading up each of the planets that we did create because, well, they are new, unique things. And so uh, it kind of has to introduce them or reintroduce them rather to the game every time you load in. It's pretty quick. It only takes about a minute. But again, the more planets you have, the longer that is going to take. So let's uh, jump into the tracking station and have a look at our new uh, lovely solar system. Now, you may have already noticed <laughs> the names are very different. And this is actually the most different of the names I've ever gotten. Again, I created six different save files, and all of them were pretty typical names that you'd have for planets, or at least, you know, they were planet, you know, names like Kalisa and things like that. This was the first save file I actually got that had alphanumeric codes added to the planets. So that is a very interesting. And if we look over at the moon, it too has an alphanumeric code. But of course, this is Starscope 00009970903. And then that's 3A over there, and Minmus is 3B. It's 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 very strange. That was definitely the weirdest of the names that I got. And if we do a zoom out to the rest of the solar system, you'll notice it's a little bit closer than typical. I mean, a lot closer. <laughs> the rest of the planets seem generally in roughly the same sort of areas, but their orbits have changed as well. Again, they aren't ever going to be drastically changed. The order of planets is still always going to remain the same. Uh, we're always going to have the same sort of uh, structure to our solar system, but they may have larger orbits or smaller orbits within that structure. And uh, yeah, you can definitely see that there is some change here. And if we just sort of cycle around through the planets, I actually don't remember if this particular one has any atmospheric planets that got added or changed. Uh, no, that's Duna. That usually has an atmosphere. And yeah, they're all that weird star scope name. That is very strange. <laughs> But yes, if we move along, uh, going there, oh, Jewel is most certainly a different color now, as you can tell. Uh, all of its things look 
I actually don't remember the orbits of Jewel all that much, but uh, they're a little bit different, it seems, from things. And yeah, just some nice little additions here and there. It doesn't look like we had any additional atmospheres added. Again, it's completely randomized, so you never know what you are going to end up getting. But uh, yeah, it's still very cool having all these things in new locations with new names. And uh, just all in all, a new experience. Once more, not the most drastic of changes, but still, it changes the game, which means a new time that you're going to have, building new rockets to explore new places and hopefully have some fun. But yeah, that is really it for this mod here today. Not a lot more to go over besides that. So if you would like to check this mod out for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next when hopefully we will be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always... Have a good one!